Now in our next example, we're going to be looking at the outer join. And I find that a lot of students confuse the semi-join with the outer join. And the difference is, with the outer join, we retain all the rows from a particular table, maybe even both tables. And if it matches, we show the corresponding attributes that it would join with. And if it doesn't match, we would uh, fill it in with null values. Okay, so let's see a little example here of the uh, outer join. In particular, we're going to be looking at the left outer join. Now we see faculty, student, and we see the basic symbol for the join here. But notice we have these two bars facing towards faculty. Now here's a little trick I use to memorize like a left outer join, a right outer join, full outer join. You look where the two bars are facing. And the way I think about it is, this means keep all the rows from faculty. And at this point, since it's left outer join, we don't care if we keep all the rows from student. So in this particular case, this is how it would look. OK, to do the full outer join, as I said, we preserve all the rows from faculty. So I merely rewrote all the rows from the faculty table, as you see here. Now the next step is find out where we match in terms of student information. And I might even put an F dot SSN here. And so we add student information. I might have S for student dot SSN, like that. And then over here I put grade point average. Now in this case for the left outer joint, I don't have a match for social security number 111. So I would have null values there. I don't have a match for 555, I'd have null values there. But I do have a match for 333, and in this case I would put the 333 and the grade point average 3.9. So as you can see in the left outer join, I retained all the rows from faculty. Where it matched student, I put that in, and if it didn't, I left it out. And that was indicated by here of these double bars facing left, which is the left outer join. Okay, now let's take a look at the right outer join. And here we have faculty, right outer join, student. As you can see, the double bars are facing towards the student. So that means we're going to retain all the rows from the student. And so I've taken the liberty to write that down here. And we see all the rows from the student, 333, 444, and 777. And then over here we see where do we match with faculty in terms of these students. Well, it's obvious we match on a 333, so we do 333, rank is full. Now we don't have a match on the 444 and a 77, so we would pad the faculty rows with null values. I could write null, I just put dashes for now. So this is an example of a right outer join. And finally, let's take a look at the full outer join. Okay, let's take a look at the full outer join. And the way we would write that would be faculty, and we have the symbol with the open bars pointing both directions, to the left and to the right, which means we retain all the rows from faculty, all the rows from students. So we say faculty full outer join with student. Now, what I've done here, I've created the first two columns are from the faculty above, and these two columns are from the student over here. What we see is the rows 1, uh, 111, 333, 555, 111, 333, 555. We matched on the 333, which we see there. And over here we have 333, 444, 777. So we retained all the rows from the student. And what we would end up doing, putting null values in wherever they have nothing in common. So that's the full outer join. Now what do we learn here? The left outer join, which be on your left here, retains all the rows on that side. The right outer join retains all the rows on that side. And the full outer join retains all the rows from the participating tables. Okay, thanks a lot and we'll stop here at this point.